It's been quite the past 48 hours here in the Northeast. After a full three feet of snow fell in some areas of Massachusetts, many are still digging out. Along the coast and on the islands, they're assessing the damage from serious flooding, washed out roads and eroded beaches. WGBH News reporter Christina Quinn spent much of the day on the South Shore. And as she shows us, towns like Marshfield and Situate have a lot of work ahead of them. Utility crews were up bright and early this morning, repairing down power lines on Ocean Street in Marshfield. The Brant Rock section of the town was pummeled by the storm breaching the seawall and devastating homes like this one. And while life on the seawall is no stranger to damage, Police Chief Philip Tavares says this storm left a lasting impression. The sea came over, uh, came over the tops of the houses, it came through some houses, it actually breached a, a 100 foot section of the seawall and uh, it destroyed several homes along here and in other sections of town. Officials continue to assess the damage, but Tavares estimates the cost to repair the seawall and other area damages will be well into the millions. In the damage that I've personally witnessed, uh, the homes, the seawalls were in the millions of uh, millions of dollars. A mile and a half away on Bay Ave, chunks of broken seawall destroyed this home's porch. The neighboring house didn't fare so well. The back of the home is completely demolished, revealing what was once a cozy, well cared for living room. Meanwhile, here in Situate, the, the situation is very similar to Marshfield. Utility crews are working hard to restore power along Situate's ocean front, and the residents who have stayed, fortunately thanks to the, the backup power supplied by generators, um, are saying that they feel lucky that they sustained little damage to their homes, but they are certainly looking forward to getting power restored so they can retain some semblance of normalcy in the near future. It was pretty uh, rough, especially the first night. Uh, it was uh, very loud, strong winds, about 70 miles an hour, and it was, uh, it was scary. Some roads remain closed in sections of Situate because of debris and overwash. Governor Charlie Baker and Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito spent much of the morning surveying the storm's damage. Baker promised town officials he would do whatever he could to help. It seems to me like you need, you need help getting access to these neighborhoods so that you can do what you need to do. And as residents clear out of the shelter and area hotels, one thing is perfectly clear. The people of Situate just need to go home. The storm took its toll on the Cape and Islands as well. Greg Berman is a coastal specialist at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. He spent the last two days assessing the damage in his area. Greg, welcome to Greater Boston. Hi, Adam. Thank you. So where were you over the past couple of days, and what did you see? I was bouncing around a few of the towns on the Cape Cod Bay shoreline, the uh, north side of Cape Cod, uh, going all the way out to about Dennis and then moving back towards Sandwich to the okay. west. And what sort of damage did you, uh, did you see? Well, it was certainly easier getting out uh, today than it was yesterday. Uh, some areas I couldn't even access yesterday due to the deep snow drifts and some of the roads that weren't plowed. So yesterday I was able to access some areas uh, in the town of Dennis that uh, typically erode and typically see some damage. And there was uh, some parking lots that lost between uh, 5 and 15 feet of the parking lot, just caved right into Cape Cod Bay. It just fell into the bay? Yeah, the sand yeah. gets washed out from underneath, then it gets undermined, and then it's not supported, and it just cracks and falls right onto the beach. Uh, you also saw something on 6A, right, that troubled you. What Describe that. Well, usually I try to get out fairly early after the high tide, but that first high tide was at 4.30 in the morning. So when first light comes up, you're trying to dig your truck out of the uh, snowbank. Right, yeah, and, I had the same experience. <laughs> and then they, they really didn't want us out before 10 a.m. just to give the crews at least a, a chance to get out there, even though we are performing an essential service, so we're allowed to be on the roads. Um, so I took 6A because it's usually a lot better driving uh, during blizzard conditions than going on the highway when you get large expanses where the wind can travel across mm -hmm. it uh, you do get whiteout conditions and that's not safe for anybody anytime so what did you see on 6a that on perturbed you well this was about six hours after that morning high tide so it should have been low tide but 6a was actually flooded in three or four spots and that's really not something you expect to see at low tide what are the challenges that Cape Cod in particular and the stretch that you uh, were frequenting today and yesterday, what are the structural challenges when it comes to erosion facing that area? Well, it's different for different areas, but 
especially along that northern shoreline, there, there's so many structures there already. Like we have the Cape Cod Canal and those jetties, and that's blocking the sand from coming down the north and replenishing beaches to the south, like along Town Neck Beach. Uh, a lot of damage on Town Neck Beach, just because it's not getting that receiving sand. So sand is leaving, but it's not coming into the system. Uh, the barrier beach system along there has seen a lot of erosion over the last five or six years. I mean further back than that, but now we're reaching kind of a breaking point just because the beach is getting narrower and narrower. When you say barrier beaches, explain to me what you mean by that. What's a barrier beach? So a barrier beach is uh, a beach that's protecting an estuarine system. So it's not necessarily protecting a house or anything, but this particular one has a large marsh system behind it, uh, large intertidal zones that are very productive for uh, uh, various fauna and flora. And those beaches are uh, fading fast? Well, this particular one's fading fast than some of the other ones, just because it's not getting the amount of sand into it. Uh, they actually put a sacrificial sand dune, which is piles of sand, between a breach that formed back in 2013. When you say sacrificial sand dune, is the assumption there that that's just going to be a temporary fix? Right. It's not really expected to be there in the long term. It's expected to last a storm or two, erode, go onto the beach, and then replenish areas down drift. Okay, since that's the short-term fix, what is the right long-term solution for the problems and the aftermath that you saw over the past couple of days? Well, really, we it's it's... A difficult situation, when you, especially when you're talking about beaches and, and uh, coastal dunes. There's not many structural fixes. I mean, you can't really put a revetment on a coastal dune. Uh, uh, one, sorry to interrupt. What's a revetment? Oh, That's a term of art I don't know. Sorry about that. It, it's formed with riprap which is large boulders. Okay. So you can just imagine boulders going up the slope. Uh, so that's not really allowed by the regulations and not very effective on barrier beaches because they're such dynamic systems. They need to, to erode and then build back so up. So how about rebuilding the, the dunes? Is that a possibility? Permanent rebuilds? Well, permanent rebuilds are tough. It, the longer you go into the future, the more sand it's going to take to preserve it at the exact point. Uh, theoretically, you should be allowing it to roll back naturally. That's what barrier beaches do with sea level rise as they move backwards as they erode. Uh, the thing right now is it's reached a point where it's so thin that it's forming breaches and overwashing quickly and, and really not being able to form a new barrier beach behind it as it's moving back. All right, on that downbeat note, Greg Berman, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me.